My name is Courtney Colson, a female to male to female detransitioner, and on this channel we try to figure out what the hell is wrong with me. And on this episode, I want to take it right back to the basics, and we are going to discuss what is transgender? I realized recently that there's so many people arguing and they're on their own little factions and sides, they're picking teams, human beings naturally are tribalist and they want to think of us as being the in-group and the out-group and anyone who's on the other side they're wrong they're evil they're inherently bad and it made me realize that what's really going wrong here is that we are not listening to people simply because of labels and i don't mind labels in some ways, you know, I am a lesbian, I am Australian, I am, you know, some descriptors are very helpful, but others, when it comes to these more nuanced things of, of gender ideology or the politics of gender and sex, you know, I, I saw this horrible forum subreddit uh, called Anti-Feminists, and I was reading through it, and I, I as a feminist, found myself agreeing. Well, I went, well, hang on. If I'm agreeing with this, then what does that say? And I don't think it means that I'm actually anti-feminist or these guys are secretly feminist. I think it's a matter of we both don't like women behaving badly or women getting special treatment. I think both a feminist and an anti-feminist could find common ground. And the other thing is that there's this idea of radical feminist and liberal feminist and you know a liberal feminist is uh, along the lines of trans women are women and radical feminists say that women or woman means adult human female and there is no shades of gray about it and when you label yourself politically i think it really limits yourself in terms of how you perceive the world and how you communicate to others and how you respond to what they're saying because i think we're at a point now where everyone's just hearing the the the, the buzzwords the trigger words the the things that automatically label you as being of a certain i get called a turf all the time i am not a turf i'm a feminist am i trans exclusionary well what do you mean by trans exclusion i don't think trans women can compete against biological women in sport um, but I don't think that transgender people uh, should be discriminated against for example so you know where do I stand well I, I I'm not even gonna label myself I don't care today I just want to tell you as factually as possible what all of this means and where it came from so in one sentence what is transsexuality? It's a mental illness. Done. Video over. The shortest video ever done. No, but really, it is gender dysphoria, as it is described in the DSM, and it's still that way to this day. That's not changed. In order to transition, you need a doctor's approval. You need a therapist to evaluate you. What we're seeing now is the transgender community wanting to push this as an identity. It's not an illness that needs treatment, but yet they're still asking for treatment. So let, let's break it on down. So back in the day, there were only transsexuals. Transgender wasn't really a term. It was just... I'm a man and I think I'd be happier as a woman or vice versa. And it was very rare, almost entirely unheard of. Most people had no idea what a transsexual was. Uh, it was all thrown in with gay, drag queens, all of that. They were all, the queer community was very tight knit because it was so small and it overlapped a lot. And therapists saw a lot of kids with this gender dysphoria, but 90% of them, about 90% of them, would outgrow it. 
and a lot of them ended up just being gay as adults. Gender dysphoria is very common amongst gay people, and that's something that people aren't really talking about anymore. So what they would do with these trans kids is just let them explore and let them outgrow it on their own. Very rarely would you have someone with lifelong gender dysphoria and it would be so severe and debilitating to the point that they felt like they needed to transition. Now, in order to transition, it took a lot of therapy and there were a lot of loops and it was, it was incredibly difficult. And in a way, that's a good thing because it was a really wide margin between I think I might want to do this too. Yes, I'm actually doing this. And then, somewhere around 2012, I actually looked it up on Google Trends, transgender really took off as, uh, as an idea. And it was probably Tumblr that really perpetuated the idea of transgender. And for the most part, it's just basically a synonym for transsexual, right? Well. Then there started to be this divide of, oh, well, we're transgender and they're transsexual. And then it evolved into, well, transsexual is an offensive term. We don't use that anymore. We're all transgender. Okay. I always considered myself a transsexual. And I was what they called a trans medicalist. I want to avoid labels, but a trans medicalist is someone who thinks of transsexuality as an illness that needs treatment. Simple enough, it's a very old school definition of it. And then you have the, uh, and we're also called true scum. And then there are the two cutes. I don't know why they're called that, but it's a group of people who see gender as an identity and being transgender is it's more of a spiritual thing it has nothing to do with requiring medical treatment, and yet they still take hormones and get surgery. Go figure. So the, the, the trans ideology, as we understand it now, was emerging around 2012. So I think that's the, the, the simplest way to explain it. Transsexual, it's just male to female, female to male. Transgender, which emerged around 2012 on social media, just started to to twist these ideas and it, it's kind of gaslighting. I don't want to use a, 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 such a strong word, but that's what it was. They were trying to convince everyone, including me, this naive 20-something on Tumblr, oh, well, what really is a woman? What really is a man? And you wouldn't really know unless you actually did a chromosome test on someone. Well, no. Turns out they love to bring intersex people into the argument. Intersexuality means you're either an intersex woman or an intersex man. Intersex people still fall under one category or the other. It doesn't mean that they're a nothing. They're aspiring for this ideal of this sexless, genderless, neutral, angelic body that cannot exist in reality, or at least not in human beings. And where I think the motivation to convince the world that sex and gender are separate is quite a homophobic one. Because what they're trying to tell you is that, well, you should unlearn your genital preferences. That it's, you can be attracted to, if you're a lesbian, well, you should surely still be attracted to a trans woman. Is she not woman enough? No, that's not how that works. Recently, I made a post on Facebook about my experiences detransitioning, and I said, no one's born in the wrong body. And hormone replacement therapy, surgeries, they are way, way more dangerous than, than, than we have been led to believe. Those of us who are getting these procedures done are not informed of what we're really getting into. The trans community downplays all of this. And I had a friend of mine, a well-meaning friend of mine, uh, and there's a lot of people out there like this who are cisgender, heterosexual, often men, who believe they're doing the right thing by championing for this minority. 
when they don't really understand any of it. And it was shocking to me that this man kept going on about, you should listen to other people's lived experiences, lived experiences, lived ex You are a cisgender, heterosexual man telling me, a detransitioner, what it is to be trans and what it is to go through the medical system and what it is to be in the trans community. And so many people have that same kind of arrogance where they think that they can scold me and correct me when these are my lived experiences. So <sighs> I'm here to explain from my perspective. Yes, I was transgender. You can't turn around and tell me, oh, you were never really trans. And I know I've used that term before in the past and people have called me out on it. And that is just for simplicity's sake. Because if I stand here and tell you I was 100% trans, but only for five years, that sends off alarm bells in the trans community. Wait, there's other ways to cure this? It doesn't have to be forever? They really hold on to this trans identity as an identity. And we're seeing this spread out into other minorities as well. You see this with the autism community. They don't want a cure. They don't see it as a disability. They are another kind of person who, who needs equal rights. And all of this, all of this traces back to the legalization of gay marriage. And of course, I, as a gay woman, I'm very happy about gay marriage, but I think a lot of these other subcultures really took advantage of that and said, ah, yes, yeah, see, gays do not need to be cured. We need to accept them and give them equal rights. Well, now you have to do it for everybody else. And the other thing is that homosexuality was treated as a medical condition, as a mental illness. And so the trans community adopts that and says, well, see, Conversion therapy was wrong for, for the gays, and it's wrong for us too. What, what do you mean conversion therapy? Because conversion means changing you from one state to another. You are a biological man, for example, and you want to be converted into a woman. That's not, that's, that's conversion therapy. Transitioning is conversion therapy. Remaining the same and having a therapist teach you to accept yourself, it's not conversion therapy. And even when I was trans, I, I viewed it as a mental illness and I was not happy about being trans and I wanted to be cured. I didn't want to have to go through surgeries and procedures I knew didn't really work. And that's the crazy thing. I was so deluded and dysphoric at the time that I didn't even really care. I just said, well, I'm trans and, you know, I want to be a man. So I guess I have to just become as close to that as I can, even though I can never achieve that. I'm five foot three. Uh, and I, I had all these new insecurities that came from realizing, well, I could never pass but being so fixated on, a, on an ideal I could never achieve. Sometimes I say that I was misdiagnosed as transgender and I mean, that's true that, well, I didn't even really get a diagnosis. No therapist actually diagnosed me. I just went, I've, I've talked about my process of transitioning in other videos, but yeah, I saw a therapist once and they said, oh, we're gonna have to see a few more times. I'm like, well, pff, God, mental health care is not free in this country, sadly. It's a real problem. So before I spend money on all these other therapy sessions, I'm going to go to this endocrinologist and you know, just talk and, and see if it's something I really want to do. Oh, this woman was doing a hard sell on testosterone. She wanted me on it as soon as possible and didn't really investigate any of my background or anything. And there's a lot of doctors out there like, like her. But the question becomes, who is really trans? How do we diagnose that? And it is something that must be diagnosed. It is a mental illness. It's not normal to hate your body. There is no such thing as being born in the wrong body. And I stand by that. We have never found any conclusive scientific evidence that there are male brains and female brains. There's no 
predictable structures that separate the two. There is one study that is often misquoted and the trans community will say, oh, well, trans women brains are the same as cis women brains. No, 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 no. Read the actual study. It says, and it's a small study, you know, there's only one, but it says transgender brains are different from cisgender brains. So that just means that trans brains are unique. Very, very different concept to, oh, trans women are like real women. No, no, that's a, you're coming up with a totally different narrative there. So that means that the, the gender dysphoria is leaving structural changes on the brain. And we've seen this with depression. We've seen it with autism. And I mean, sadly, these kinds of, well, it takes a long time for anyone to get an MRI through the public healthcare system. They're very expensive. But also it seems that they can only really detect these things like autism and, and gender dysphoria. In particular, lab conditions. So I don't know if it's just the frequency they do it or the amount of, uh, of uh, access they have to the patient. Or, well, I don't know. But at you as an average person, not part of a study, you can't just say to a doctor, I would like an MRI to find the gender dysphoria in my brain. That's just not common practice yet. But it'd be great if we could do that. What we have now is a kind of cultural hysteria. You know, if I had had the feelings I did 10 years before that, it would have been anorexia. 10 years before that, repressed memories. 10 years before that, who knows, uh, demonic possession, which did actually become quite popular after The Exorcist came out. <laughs> it's true. Women especially are prone to these sorts of, I don't know, psychic disturbances as they call them, you know, when these ghost hunters and exorcists go into a house, they usually say, is there a, a girl living, a young girl? Because during puberty especially, girls, to deal with their, their, their changes, I guess, and these emotional changes and, and stresses, they will fixate on things, you know, especially if they're autistic, they will fixate on the idea of, oh, I'm possessed, or I have autism, or I am fat, and I need to starve myself, or whatever it is. This is how women deal with these issues, and you see a little bit of that with homosexual men, not so much heterosexual men. Men, straight men, I should say, tend to bottle things up inside, and then they'll act out in ways like school shootings or you know violent outbursts whereas women tend to sort of attack the self so okay now that leads me to the the other point i mean <laughs> i'm trying to keep this as succinct as possible it's really difficult why do women transition so we're going to focus on you know why men do it why women do it so women mostly seem to transition due to trauma. They are lesbians, especially butch lesbians, who don't feel comfortable being gender non-conforming. And that's where I feel like, you know, becoming transgender is gay conversion therapy. You know, that you don't want to be a butch woman because that comes with a lot of prejudice. So if you become a man and you pass as a man, well, there's no problem, is there? It can also be that a girl has been raped and she is so ashamed of her body and she hates her genitals and her breasts and she just wants to remove it all. And becoming a man or becoming non-binary, non-gendered, that's an escape, that's a coping mechanism. And there's very, very few documented cases of this, but uh, autoandrophilia. So, we have a lot of information about autogynophilia. It's been studied extensively for decades. Autogynophilia is where a man is turned on by being a woman and doing things that only women can do. Women transitioning to men don't seem to have that same motivation. It doesn't seem to be sexually motivated. There are some people who say at trans men or D-trans women, so former trans men, it's 
very confusing, isn't it? But biological females who have either lived as men or are currently living as men, that's an easy way to put it, they report sometimes feeling turned on at the idea of being strong and big and masculine. And I did too. I mean, I didn't really have a sex drive. I didn't have sex drive at all when I was a man. But still that thought, yeah, kind of gave me feelings. So I don't know if that's just a component of taking testosterone, but primarily women don't seem to have a sexual motivation. As for trans women, why do men transition? Well, again, it is a lot of gays who are super effeminate and they want to do feminine things. And then at a certain point they think, oh, that's not enough. I need to actually be a woman. So there are the gay men who, who transition. And that's one thing. But there are these autogynophiles. And the whole, I don't know, the, the, the highest goal is to be appealing to straight men. And so a lot of, you've probably seen them, you know, on Instagram and stuff, that they're just caked up to the nines, the big fake titties, you know, bleach blonde hair. You know, they look like they're from the cover of like FHM or Playboy or, or one of those, you know. And it's not a real vision of a, of a human female. It is this artifice. It, it's, it's a purely constructed idea. Which is, you know, fitting because they say that gender is performance. Well, I guess you're proving your point. <laughs> so, yeah, there are a lot of gay men. I mean, there are some straight men, and I, and I know some straight men who are, are transitioning or have transitioned into women. And that's really surprising to me. I mean, some of, there's one that I have mentioned before, and he is, he's with a girlfriend. I think they're still together. And he says he's, you know, oh, I'm, I'm totally straight, not interested in men. Very Christian upbringing, very conservative Christian family. And when I went over to his house, he was still living with his parents. His bedroom looked exactly the same as it did when he must have been 10 years old. Little clown painted wooden blocks in the door. Have It's got his name spelled out on the door. I was looking around going, Jesus Christ, what am I getting into? Um... You know, lovely boy, and I met him through the cosplay community. And uh, on his walls were, were pictures of Ricky Martin and Frank Sinatra. And I was just like, okay, yeah, I don't know any straight boys who have men, especially Ricky Martin, on their walls in their early 20s. Uh, yeah, big red flags there. So I think he is just a repressed homosexual. And I hope one day he comes to terms with that. But yeah, he is still dating this girl. And he's transitioning. And he looks like shit. The estrogen's like bloated out of his face. He's got a lot of uh, fluid retention, which um, in one of my other videos, my FML video, uh, which is an update of my life. Yeah, taking wrong sex hormones causes fluid retention in the face and you just look awful. Um, so, you know, I... I know that the, the TERFs and the rad fams are not particularly sympathetic to any transgender person, but especially trans women. And I can understand that, yes, a lot of trans women are very aggressive. They are forcing themselves into these spaces. Trans men keep to themselves. Trans men just try to pass and keep their heads down because they're socialized as women. They behave as women do. They're polite. They, they don't overstep their boundaries. Whereas trans women are just like, Oi, right, I belong in this fucking bathroom. And just like, woo, okay. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm not saying all trans women are like that. But yeah, there are the autogynophiles. And the autogynophiles, I mean, some of these guys are just perverts. They're not actually trans. But they're abusing this current system of absolute acceptance at face value as a way to be predators. And they, I mean, there are countless, countless stories, maybe I'll, I'll pull up a few here, of men who are arrested. And upon being arrested, they say, oh, actually, my name's Stacy, and I'm a trans woman, so I just man to be sent to the women's prison, thank you. And then proceed to do lots of rapes, lots and lots of rapes. If you have to put condom machines in your women's prison, you're doing something wrong. 
you know, it's all down to power dynamics. These people know reality. They know a trans woman knows he's bigger and stronger than a, a biological woman, and a trans man knows that he is not stronger than a biological man. So there's all of that issue. There's all of these issues that are coming into play that are really confusing the system. These are not trans people. They're taking advantage of the system. They're claiming to be something they're not. They don't have to go through any kind of therapy or get any kind of diagnosis. You can just be in the courtroom one day, slap a $5 wig on your head and say, oh yeah, I'm a woman now. That's just not on. And it, it, I don't think it's really happening in Australia. I know it's happening a lot in America, a little bit in Britain. But it's, it's shocking that uh, crimes committed by women have shot up by a hundred and something percent. Really? Let's have a look at, oh no, they're all men claiming to be women. Yeah, and that's fucked as well. When you are doing statistics on crime, look at the sex. Don't look at the gender. That has nothing to do with anything. What is between their legs? And that's essentially all it comes down to. I know it's crass and the trans community says, unlearn your genital bias and, um, you know, that you, we are more than that. No, we are our bodies. No matter what you do in life, you cannot escape your body. And, um, okay, that brings me into transhumanism, which is this belief that is becoming increasingly popular these days. And, you know, I'm into it to a degree. Transhumanism says that human beings should have the right to augment themselves and enter the next stage of humanity. They should become cyborgs. They should genetically augment themselves. They should do all that. And, yeah, you know, I think some of these therapies are good i'm i'm all about life extension and youth extension but it's also perpetuating this culture that says you are this special thing in in your in your brain there's this soul there's this consciousness that can be distilled and transferred to a different body and I really believed that. I was really into that for a long time and wanted to be a cyborg of some description. But I realized I am nothing but this body. The brain and the body are not separate things. The way you feel emotionally has a lot to do with how you're feeling physically. You know, things seem more overwhelming when you're tired or you're hungry or you're sick. And... The idea that you can become anything, you can reject your body and you would still be you. No. If you put my brain in a male body, I would stop being me. I mean, I, I can talk to this extensively that I had no sex drive. And then when I stopped taking testosterone, I developed a normal libido. And I suddenly became a different person. I am absolutely not Connor. I don't have the same thoughts. I don't have the same interests. I don't have the same priorities. Yeah, there's some overlap, but just having a sex drive turns you into a different person. I look at people differently. I'm I'm horny, or I make dirtier jokes. I I feel like an adult, whereas Connor was not an adult. He was this sort of childlike android pixie thing. <laughs> so. When you, I guess all of this is what I'm trying to say is when you try to turn transsexuality into something that it isn't, that, it, that, it's, that it's spiritual, that it's just a gender identity, it is, it, it's identity, it's just a facet of who you are, then you get into some real dangerous territory. But I subscribe to the old school idea that this is something we, we have scientifically quantified and observed. It is gender dysphoria, a mental illness, and we are going to treat it because it is causing distress to the patient. If this is just your identity and you're born as transgender, why do you need to transition? Anything that needs modern technological intervention is not natural. Yes, as we got more evolved and more civilized and we had civilization, 
we always had a sexual dichotomy of male and female. And I know that the trans community loves to say, oh, but what about the Fafafina in, I think they're Fiji from the top of my head, or they're Polynesian, I know they're, it's Polynesian. Um, and there's a lot of different communities that have more than two genders. Okay, you as a Westerner are taking these ideas from cultures you are not a part of, and you are using them for your argument when you don't really understand the full context. So they talk about the Fafafina, uh, which is a Polynesian concept of raising boys as girls. But that's not really the truth of it. And I've talked to people who, who have experienced this and there's, a, there's documentaries on this and I've watched that. And how it actually works is that Sometimes it's simply a case of, well, we have seven boys, but we need a girl to do all the girl tasks in our community. So uh, the youngest son, you're now going to be raised as a girl. Okay. Uh, or they're just gay little boys. Well, he seems kind of effeminate. You're going to be raised as a girl now. And it traumatizes a lot of these kids. It is not a good thing. And it's one of those things that kind of flies under the radar because it's this cultural thing you know a minority is is doing this behind closed doors within their culture and i mean not to talk about those issues you know sexism and and all of that that goes on in other cultures other religions that's that's a whole other topic for another day but yeah you as a westerner do not understand what it is to be Fafafina and don't use that as a way of bolstering your argument for transsexuality. The same thing as intersex people. Intersex people, you don't even understand how they work, first of all, and now you're bringing them into an argument they do not want to be a part of. What you're doing and what they're doing is not the same thing at all. A trans person transitions prior to puberty your chromosomes are set in place before you are even born. And so that brings me to another topic is, well, what do we do with the children? When someone think of the children? Um, well, you, you, you're born male or female. You're not assigned female or male at birth. You are either male or female. And that's the other, this, it's, it's Orwellian, you know. I know that word's used a lot, but Orwellian, it really is changing the language of, Oh, I'm not born a woman. No, 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 no. I'm assigned female at birth and then I transition to my true sex. All of this language, it's cult tactics. And, you know, this is me being as neutral as possible, but the evidence, sorry, it's not peer-reviewed literature, and I still support transsexuals. You know, they're, they, they're allowed to do what they do. I support body modification. I personally don't feel like I need to make any changes to my body to be more interesting. I am already interesting enough. I, I don't need to draw attention to myself. Um, but yeah, if that's what makes you feel complete, whether it's getting like ginormous titties or tattoos and making yourself look like a dragon, I don't know. But you as a consenting, properly informed adult should have the right to do that. And... I will fight for your right to do that, even if I don't agree. I think you should have proper counselling and proper education before you do any life-altering procedure. But I am absolutely not saying no. And that's where I get thrown into the turf category of, oh, you're, you're going to kill trans... You, literal violence. You're going to kill trans people because you're going to put a few extra, I don't know, stages between them deciding they want to do this and actually getting to do it. You know, I don't think it should be covered by Medicare. I don't think that it should be as easily accessible. I think you do need to go through a certain amount of therapy. And I need these therapists to be properly trained to actually explore these issues. Not just affirm and say, yes, you have said that you were trans. As of two weeks ago, that was the first time you decided. But you know what? Let's give you some hormones. It's insane. We need more rigorous testing and screening, I should say. I want us to find a way 
to not have collateral damage, to not have detransitions, to not have people deeply regret this and deeply disfigured for the rest of their lives. And I realize that now, you know, I was so determined to become a thing I couldn't become. And I was unhappy, I was deeply miserable, and a lot of transgender people are deeply miserable. They're constantly tr chasing this goal they'll never reach. Children will experiment with identity. That is perfectly normal. They are, they've just come into this world and they're trying to figure out their place in it and what they like and who they are. And yeah, of course kids are going to say from one day to, oh, I'm a boy, oh, I'm a girl. Depending on how their parents react, that, that will influence what they say. Or I'm Optimus Prime, I'm Batman. They're just playing around, but now adults go, oh, oh, you, you said you're the opposite sex? Oh, wow, honey, uh, well, I'm just going to get you to a gender clinic immediately. No, no, calm down. And here's the other thing. So here's the other nefarious player. The Munchausen's by proxy mother. Photo unrelated. But you know, sometimes it's fathers, but very, very rarely. It's mostly mothers who wanted a daughter, who don't want a gay son. Um, it's very rarely it's transitioning girl to boy, but that does happen. That seems to happen more often with trans men mothers. So you, this, a trans man will give birth to a daughter, and then, hmm, you know, when she's old enough to talk, suddenly she wants to be a boy just like mummy. It's very, very confusing, and don't even get me started on how fucked it is for a trans man to want to get pregnant. That is the most feminine female thing you could do in the whole world, and that should be your worst nightmare as a trans man. As a trans man, former trans man, to me, that was disgusting. I found that ridiculous, and I was always really critical of the trans community and a lot of the bullshit they did. So that's why I fell under the trans medicalist camp where it's like, hey, well, I've got more conservative, more scientific based ideas about what transgender is. But these people, no, pregnancy is not a female thing. It is uh, a non-gendered thing. And, you know, we're chest feeders. We're not breastfeeding. We're, and we're not pregnant women. We're pregnant people. Fuck off. And again, invading women's spaces and taking away our words, our language, and yet men don't face this. They're not penis havers, they're not ejaculators, they're just men. Children are not fully formed individuals. Uh, there's all these nefarious articles out there now saying, uh, from therapists, like child therapists, saying, oh yes, no, children absolutely know who they are from the moment they can talk. You're a child psychiatrist. You know that everything a child says is bullshit. It's usually just babble. It's not even English. It's just gibberish. How do they know what they are? Oh my god. I mean, even gay kids don't really know they're gay. I don't think there's anywhere that's legal to put minors on cross-sex, wrong-sex hormones. But they do give them puberty blockers. And that should never, ever have been allowed to happen. Because that shit is lethal. It will destroy your skeletal system, your brain development. It will ruin you for life. And all I ever heard in the news when I was trans was, oh, it just pauses puberty. It doesn't cause any damage. And okay, it makes them infertile. So what? As someone who wants to become a mother now, if my mother had been told this is the only way that your daughter won't kill herself and that's the thing they always use that oh well your child's going to kill themselves they're not going to do that if you transition them they might um everyone commits suicide doesn't matter what group you're a part of but uh mutilating them at a young age before they know what they're doing yeah that'll definitely do it but um yeah oh well you absolutely must give me puberty blockers yeah if my mum had been convinced to do that i'd be devastated as a 30-year-old woman now, you know, if I was this manling thing, half-man creature, you know, my, my, my skeletal development, my, uh, you know, body hair, all of that, you know, everything would have been much more masculine. And there would have been no one doing that. I would have looked like a man in a dress forever. And I am just so, so thankful that I was not trans as a child. I was not pressured into this sort of thing. It didn't exist in the 90s. And the idea that you would put these kids on this thing that is going to increase their gender dysphoria, 
they're going to feel disconnected from their body, from their peers who are going through sexual changes, while this kid who is on, I think it's a Lupron, is not changing, is not developing, is going to have more anxiety, is going to have a lot of issues with weight and bone density, image unrelated. So yes, kids can never be trans, it's impossible. They are not old enough to know what they're doing. This is just body modification. This is this is not some, oh, you're spiritually born to be the other se No, it's all freaking bullshit. It is just a mental illness. And children should definitely be given the space to explore and figure it out. Transitioning should absolutely be the last resort. So yeah, breaking it down to its most fundamental thing. Back in the day, transsexuality was just a mental illness. It still is. That has never changed. Don't be fooled by all this other really confusing rhetoric and language and all of that. These are people who have a very serious condition. It's very sad. It's, it can be lifelong. And these people do deserve respect. They do deserve good, safe, proper medical treatment. And that is the thing I'm fighting for. And if I'm a monster and I'm a turf because of that, well, look, I'm parting it up in hell because I don't give a shit. I don't have any regrets for trying to help people. And... That's basically it. The whole idea of sex and gender being different. No. Gender is a cultural construct. The gender stereotypes. You're either a man or a woman. And a man and a, and a woman, they can be whatever they want. They can do whatever they want with the hair, the makeup, the whatever. No one's telling you that you have to pretend to be the opposite sex to do what you want. How did we become so regressive? You know, there was a time where we had... Prince and Annie Lennox and David Bowie and all these people who just said, fuck you, I don't care what sex I am, I'll do whatever I want. Why can't we get back to that? And yeah, I think in some very, very, very rare cases, gender dysphoria is lifelong. These people just don't seem to feel better doing anything else but transitioning. And it seems to work for some people. I know some people in the 60s and 70s who transitioned a long time ago. But we also have to be aware that these procedures, a lot of the time, do not work. Hormone replacement therapy, in my case, and in the case of many other people, causes autoimmune disease. It causes fibromyalgia, arthritis, chronic fatigue syndrome. It causes depression and anxiety. There are studies now that show that gender dysphoria isn't really treated by transitioning. And yeah, there may be some rare exceptions who feel better. Maybe for a little while, maybe forever. But what I need people to understand is that these procedures don't really work. This is not good enough. I think transgender people deserve better. Transsexuals, as we should be rightly calling them, deserve better. The, you know, the, the, the penises and the, the vaginas, the neo-vaginas and the, and these arm flesh penises that they make, that's barbaric. That is a joke. That is just asking for disease and a lot of them do become infected. Some of them do need to be amputated. The trans community downplays, down minimizes as much as possible the risks, the failures. It's almost like the vegan community. Oh, well, they're ex-vegan because they just didn't know how to do it right. No, these people are giving it their all. They're, they, they have the right mindset. It's just the medical community is taking advantage, especially plastic surgeons. You know, they are absolute vultures and they will tell you what you want to hear and they will convince you that you really can become the opposite sex and pass. It's, it's atrocious. So I think that about covers everything. I don't think gender is real. I'm a gender atheist. I think transsexuality is real. I think gender dysphoria is real. I don't think surgery and hormones are the only answer. I do. I, I will allow adults to do whatever body modification they want, but they need to be properly informed 
And these procedures need to be more closely examined and reach a certain standard. Because right now they're experimental. They are dangerous and experimental. And children should never, ever, ever be allowed to transition. I think that's... I, I don't think that's controversial, but I'm sure someone will argue with me. <laughs> Alright, until next time, see you, Space Cowboy.